Okay, welcome to the video. So today I'm going to be talking about what I personally think we will be seeing at Apple's September event where they usually unveil the iPhones, but there's going to be more than iPhones this year. Most years there's more than iPhones. They have something else extra. And I'm going to be discussing everything that I think we will be seeing at the September 2016 Apple event in this video. So let's get right into it. Okay, first things first, this is almost obvious because it's a September event, but of course we will be seeing new versions of these guys, iPhones. So, there's been a lot of leaks, rumors, and speculation over the iPhone 7, and it's almost, like, there's almost, there's almost nothing that hasn't been leaked yet on the iPhone 7. Almost everything's obvious. So, the smaller iPhone 7, that's going to be 4.7 inches, the same size as my iPhone 6 here. That iPhone, the back isn't going to have a dual camera like the larger one, but it's going to have a larger camera. It's going to go down further and out wider. It's going to be just a larger camera overall, and it's going to slope up instead of having the metal around it. Yeah, so the iPhone 7 is going to be a very basic update. It's not going to be a big upgrade like you usually see from the 5S to the 6, from the 4S to the 5 like pre all previous upgrades because Apple's going to a three-year upgrade program from a two-year upgrade program which means we won't see as major updates in the phones unless in, in it's every three years so if you want a phone that has like a lot of changes then you're gonna have to wait till 2017 in September when we see the I believe the 10th anniversary iPhone which is supposed to be a really big one with lots of new things that have been in the works for about a decade or so. So it's going to be really interesting. But this year it's going to be a more calm, less noticeable update. So the iPhone 7 is going to look almost identical to the 6 and 6S, except the antenna lines, some of them are going to be gone, the one below the camera here, to make room for the larger lens, and the bottom one there. Don't know why the bottom one's going to be gone, probably just for looks. Yeah, so it's going to look nicer on the back. I think it looks nicer on the back removing the two antenna lines there and making the camera bigger and slope it looks more elegant to me but the front, as, as, uh, as we talk about the front here, the front's going to look very very similar there is a rumor that this top thing up there you see top sensor is going to move into the part where you see the speaker and it's just going to be a longer speaker and nothing at the top I don't, I don't really like the look, I've seen a concept of the look but I, I'd rather the iPhone 6 design in terms of the front, where you have like one thing on the top and two and below it. The screen size is the same. And we might have a home button that isn't really a button. It's going to be possibly just a circle with 3D touch, so when you press on the home button it feels like it's a home button, but it's actually just a part of the screen. Now that's not been confirmed, but it's very possible. I'm just confused as to how Touch ID would work there. Maybe there'd just be a sensor on top of the screen and it would still work the same way. I don't know. But it doesn't seem like big changes, just some minor changes like a new type of home button, larger camera, removal of antenna bands, so kind of an improved version of the iPhone 6 and 6S is what we should see. And there. of course, the other smartphone that Apple plans, plans to launch... Sorry, my hair is bugging me here. But the other phone that they plan to launch is the iPhone 7 Plus or iPhone 7 Pro. We're not sure about the naming yet. There's lots of speculation as to if it's going to be called iPhone 7 Pro or iPhone 7 Plus. And personally, I think it's just going to be called iPhone 7 Plus because they really don't have any reason to change the name to anything different unless there's any legal issues, maybe. But for now, I just see it being iPhone 7 Plus. And what the iPhone 7 Plus will have is a dual camera and what the dual camera could do is allow you to record two different types of videos at once. So say you want to record a slow-mo and a time-lapse at the same time, you can do that because both singular cameras, one of them will take uh, each job. So one will take one job and one will take the other. So then you could record two different styles of videos at once. And in photos, when you zoom in, it won't get all grainy like it does. When you take a picture and you zoom in, usually on iPhones it gets all grainy the more you zoom in. But that won't happen if there's two cameras because, I, actually I don't know why, I can't go into the science. I just know that, that according to rumors, when you, when you zoom in with, with that camera that's supposedly going on the iPhone 7 Plus, it stops it from getting all grainy like it does on current iPhones. So that's definitely a good inclusion. 
and they might also have a smart connector on the back, which means we might see wireless charging exclusively in the larger iPhone 7, the iPhone 7 Plus, or Pro. Now, I think Apple's getting a little bit late to the game, though, because many Android manufacturers have had wireless charging for so long, like the Nexus 5 from Google and LG, and the Samsung Galaxy S6. There's so many Android phones that wirelessly charge. So it definitely would be a good thing if Apple finally got in the game now. We might actually see that with the smart connector. But also we might see some really cool cases, maybe like maybe like battery cases, all you have to do is snap them on the back of your phone and it connects through the smart connector. So then you could wirelessly charge with a really thin case. You never know, but there's lots of open possibilities with a smart connector on the iPhone because there's so much possibilities that have been open on the iPad Pro with the smart connector. So we never know what the iPhone will get benefit from with that connector if it does come to the light of day in the iPhone 7 Plus or iPhone 7 Pro. Other than that, it's going to keep the 5.5 inch screen identical to the iPhone 6 and 6S Plus. Not much change again on the front, but it might have the change that I mentioned before in the iPhone 7. There might be a little change on the front with the sensors. I don't believe it will happen, and I don't like the look of it, so I hope not. But it could happen, and if it did, it would happen on both models. Yeah, so I think that's all there is to talk about for the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus or iPhone 7 Pro that we should expect to see at Apple's event in September. Okay, we might also see a brand new refresh of the MacBook Pro and a really big refresh. And there hasn't been a big refresh of the MacBook Pro since I believe the Retina display was added to it. But that may change at the September event because apparently the MacBook will finally be receiving major updates and modernization, basically. So, the new MacBook Pro might feature a OLED screen on the bottom as like a toolbar type thing for keys. You know where on the MacBook where you have the top keys right at the top right before the screen? Those might be removed and replaced with an OLED screen. But, yeah, so we'll see. Probably improved battery, that OLED screen seems cool. It'll probably be a little bit thinner, that's what I'm guessing, because Apple has an obsession with making their MacBooks thinner, and apparently it'll have a USB-C connector, but what I'm hoping is that it's not only one single connector, kind of like the new MacBooks that are released in 2016, the 11-inch ones, which I disagree with having only one port, and especially USB-C, because it's not really that commonplace yet. But I think that's what we will be seeing. It looks like that from the rumors, sadly. So we'll just, I guess, have to put up with it and get adapters and stuff. MacBook users that are going to be getting that new MacBook. I don't think I will if it's like that, even though I'm looking for a MacBook. I probably wouldn't get it if it was USB-C only, because it's just not good for professionals yet. But that's just my personal opinion. People have other opinions. And it's something to pretty much expect in this MacBook. Only one port, and that being USB-C. And, well, of course, there'll probably be a headphone jack, but I don't know if you could consider that a port. We can hope there's a headphone jack in there and they don't go the iPhone 7 way and remove the headphone jack. But, yeah, probably one single USB-C port. And as for the iPad and the MacBook Air and the, all the other MacBooks and Macs, I don't think we will be seeing any upgrades. We don't see that in rumors or speculation yet, but what we might see is, an, uh, this This is kind of like a far-fetched thing that I say, it is potentially a Apple Watch 2 with, uh, with just more speed, more power, more accessories, more, more features that allow for more accessories, so you can accessorize your watch a lot more and possibly a camera, that's what I'm hoping. So, there might be an Apple Watch 2 to come out with the iPhone 7 since the original one came out with the iPhone 6. So they might do this every time a new number iPhone comes out. That's what people call them, like the 6, 7, 5. Yeah, so maybe whenever a new number iPhone comes out is when Apple will release the next Apple Watches. So, we might see an updated Apple Watch 2 here at this event. But don't get your hopes up for it, take it with a grain of salt. I just heard it, like a very tiny rumor, it's not really too verified. 
but it's always possible. So we could see an Apple Watch too, but just take it with a grain of salt. Okay, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching, and let's hope that this event is filled with lots of new interesting products with lots of new useful things that we can use in our daily life. Let's hope the tech that they release is actually helpful for our daily life and they actually bring a lot of good updates to their product lines such as the iPhone, MacBook, Apple Watch, and iPad. I don't think I'll be able to watch the event live, I think I'll be at school. So I won't be able to cover it until afterwards and I'll have to watch it. So I probably won't have video videos up about the event after this. So this is the only video I'm probably going to make about this event. So here I'm just going to say before the event starts and everything happens and all, I'm just going to say this is the rumors that I've seen and let's hope all of the good wishes come true and all the, uh, and all the bad things like the removal of the headphone jack, things like that don't come true. Let's hope we just stay, I hope Apple just keeps the stuff that we're content with. And I think Apple is going to have a long, lengthy event, one or two hours, with a bunch of updates to every single product line, whether they be big or small, but the biggest updates will be to the iPhone and MacBook. So they'll probably just be called like the iPhone and MacBook event by most people, because it's probably just going to be focused on the iPhone and the MacBook, and then like minor updates to everything else, but we could see a new Apple Watch if there's enough time in their event, but just don't expect it. So that's all I have to say for this event. Let's enjoy it. Let's hope it's all uh, it's a really good event, a memorable memorable event. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. And let's hope this event is good. Bye -bye.